there's food in the studio and that's always a good thing and I have a beautiful guest today. My guest today has found success in the kitchen with a whole line of healthy baked goods. But her passion for baking has also made it motivated her to change lives on the other side of the world when her life was dramatically impacted by the loss of a child. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street, Marcy. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so about seven years ago, was it about then? Yes. That you decided that you would kind of rebirth something that you'd been doing for a while, and that is baking, and you have this beautiful line of what I love is healthy baked goods, because I have a sweet tooth, and I loved baked goods, but it's finding stuff that kind of goes with my health challenges as well, and gluten and all of those things. So tell me about what you've created with Marcy's Bakery. Well, uh, we started with making mixes, uh, which was super fun, um, and we wanted them to be healthy and people to be able to bake at home. Yeah. We soon learned that people would rather eat than bake. <laughs> Yes, so you answer that one. <laughs> we would do demos and like I really love these mixes, but I just want to buy the cookies. Eat them. So we started with cookies, but we went into bites as well, and then um, brownies. brownies. And then we got into uh, yeah more cookies, and then we got into bread and buns and wraps. Actually, mm. uh, the bites seem to be the winner of everything we make. They seem to be super versatile, and people want to buy them just to pop in their mouth when they're driving, yeah. or from work, a little snack, or for their children, because they're a nice size treat, and they're, they can take them to school. And how much of a difference has this made in, as you said, people's lives who might have health challenges, but really love baked items? Right, so that's the whole purpose of the business yeah. uh, regarding the product itself, is that anyone, no matter what the food allergy or sensitivity, can eat what we make, mm -hmm. and that really, like, it just makes me, my heart, uh, tick, you know, yeah. because no one gets left out, yeah. safe for everybody. Even if someone doesn't have a food allergy or sensitivity, they can enjoy our baking. Okay, so we've seen the delicious goods and I will partake after. <laughs> but there's a story behind your baked goods. We're gonna go sit down, but there is a, a charity that gets a lot of the benefits from the sales of Marcy's Bakery items. Tell me about Baby Safe. Yes, Baby Safe uh, was birthed in South Africa it is an organization, a not-for-profit organization, that rescues abandoned babies. And I mean, like they go into garbage dumps and there are babies there. They mm -hmm. go to the beaches and they will find a baby in a knapsack. They will go to an abandoned car and possibly find a baby in the abandoned car. Wow. And yeah, it's extremely sad. Um, and what happens is that young ladies, and, and whatever age, they may find themselves in a situation where they're having a baby that they cannot care for or don't want for whatever reason and absolutely no judgment. Mm. The purpose of the organization is to save those babies. Mm. And when I found out about that organization, my heart literally leapt and I said, I have to help them. I, I want to be a part of saving these babies. And there's a personal reason behind this as well. You had lost a little one and so that really resonated with you. Tell me about the loss of your little boy. So um, he was our third son mm -hmm. and I was full term, a week overdue to be exact. And we drove to the hospital to have our third son. Uh, we didn't know it was a boy at the time. Everyone is a surprise to yeah. us with our children. But we went to the hospital to have our third child. And we got into the, the whole routine of, of going in and, you know, getting into your hospital room and being, you know, getting prepared to have a child. and. Um, I was well into labor and uh, ready to have this baby, and a lot of pain to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the routine started, the, the doctor came in to deliver and by the time she showed up, I was, the labor was hard and fast, so I didn't have time for an epidural or anything like that. Um, and uh, she told me that she was having a hard time delivering him because he's a really big baby mm -hmm. and she needed all the help I could give her. And uh, without all the details beyond that, um, we delivered a beautiful nine pound, four ounce baby boy mm -hmm. who didn't live. Mm -hmm. There is no, it was like uh, a terrible curveball from left field that hit me right smack in the head. Like I had no idea. I had a healthy pregnancy. He was a big size, fully grown, nothing wrong with him, yeah. little boy that just didn't live. Mm -hmm. And it had, I can absolutely say it's the most devastating thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I still cry. It's been several years, yeah. um, and I miss him terribly. 
How do you grapple with your faith during that time? I, I can only imagine there are many questions like why, why, why? I know I've walked alongside a, a number of friends who've gone through miscarriages, and that's the question, is why? How are you processing this as a mother, as a believer, all of those things? Uh, before this happened, um, in about my third or fourth month, I was worshiping at church one day, mm. And uh, I saw a vision of an empty car seat in the aisle at church beside me. And it was kind of startling. And I just prayed and I said, God, like, I don't know if that's a sign, but I'm all in. Mm -hmm. Like, I love you. And if you're trying to give me a sign, um, I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is 100%. I'm all in. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. And the day we walked out of the hospital with the empty car seat, it all came rushing in. And I was like, Boy, I did say that, didn't I? Because I was devastated. Yeah. But there's scriptures that have kept me going. Mm -hmm. um, and I really believe that God is with us in everything. And he knew my grief and he knew, I, I know he knew it was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And so the support that came from the people at my church, uh, the love, even people brought us meals for weeks. I had, I received beautiful cards. Uh, the funeral was so beautiful. And so many women in our church, even who were pregnant, um, making food for us at the funeral. But one of the things I really felt God say to me from Joshua 1.9 is mm -hmm. to be strong and courageous. Mm. And there's another scripture that talks about God comforts us so that we can comfort those who will go, who will go through things. Yeah. And I really am there for other people who are going through this or who have gone through this to comfort them and to help them. Mm. But I know he's with me. He's with me from the minute I was born to the minute I go to be with him. So I don't, I didn't feel alone in it. I don't anymore mm -hmm. either. Like at this stage and in, in, in the years that have gone by. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I, my faith hasn't wavered because God is so good in so many ways, mm. you know? Mm. Fast forward, you end up having another child. Yes. And, and, you know, obviously never replacing your son. No, no. You can never do that. Absolutely not. But God was faithful with providing another child into That's your right. life. Yes, and we had, the, our fourth child was a girl. Mm -hmm. So three boys and a girl. It's kind of nice because we had the opposite gender. Yeah. Right, like a real sweet surprise. And she is a ball of energy and uh, 17 now. <laughs> and a wonderful young lady, along with our two other sons who are great young men. And I alluded to the fact that you had kind of restarted Marcy's Bakery after a kind of a lapse, a little bit of a break. But really now you see the motivation and the direction of Marcy's Bakery is, is really to give back, is really to, to give back to this charity as well, and, and to not take your loss for granted by giving back. Wow, wow, that's really well put. Um, mm. Yeah, no, I sure don't take it for granted. I feel like I see the purpose, like not that I would wish this upon anybody or if I could change it, you know, I would have, but because of the loss of our child. And then when I was exposed to this ministry in South Africa called the Baby Safe, I didn't realize, I didn't put the two and two together, mm -hmm. but I really believe God had called me to support this ministry mm -hmm. and to bless these kids. And you know, I feel like I have an opportunity to save babies in some small way from our business supporting them um, where I couldn't save my own, mm. but it motivated me to help save children that I do have an opportunity to. Mm. That is an inspiration, Marcy. Thank because you. Because I think, I think we can choose to um, have loss and, and, and more than that, and I think that's okay, but to then say, how do I turn this around, I think is an inspiration. Thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you, I appreciate your words very much. They, it truly is. So if people are interested in Marcy's baked goods, where can they get them? Oh, well, we, they're available all over Ontario. Um, if they go on our website, uh, marcysbakery.com, you can see all the stores in Ontario that carry our products. Uh, we also have an online shop. They can order and have it delivered right to their home. Oh, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Marcy. Thank You're you so for your ministry. Oh, thank you, Maggie, very much. I hope you've been encouraged by this amazing story. And you know, maybe you've gone through the loss of a child. Maybe you can't have children and you've been trying. I would encourage you to call our prayer lines. Again, amazing prayer partners who have lived through life, 
who know people who have gone through similar circumstances you've gone through, can pray with you, encourage you, and remind you that God is walking alongside of you. You might not feel it at this moment, but he is. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A decade ago, we didn't have a device that had social media right there with us. So now basically this device has become kind of a barometer of self-esteem. It tells us exactly how popular we are, how many friends we have. Hey parents, looking for a kid-friendly streaming platform for the whole family? Well, look no further. Castle is here. Rock Kids TV, TQ, Louis Says, Summer Camp, and Hey Misha. Family, faith, fun, castle. Stream for free at IntoTheCastle.com. Castle, it's open for you. Okay, so does this mean that you are the king of the castle since you're a chief growth officer? I am. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not. It's Jesus who is the king of the castle, and so that's why we called it castle. Yeah. Because we have a king that we serve, and we can serve him with the content that we provide. And for friends at home that might not know or might know about castle, it is our streaming service where you're able to, again, get great family-friendly, safe content through Castle. Okay, so great family and kids content That's as right. well. Tell me about Hey Misha, which is our new kids programming. Gosh, Misha is probably the most uh, energetic host I've ever seen on yeah. television. Uh, every episode is has biblical teaching built right into it, but it's amazing graphics, it's visual. I mean, it's probably one of the hardest shows that we've ever made here at Crossroads, just because it's highly visual and we, we had to really work at it. And Misha was just actually recorded in the studio just next door just over there. from 100 Huntley Street. What other great children's content is there on Castle? We have a bunch of like kids worship. There's a kids yeah. worship um, package. There's also a rock kids, which is amazing. Yep. Obviously, Hey Misha, we're going to do more Hey Mishas. Uh, so I uh, probably shouldn't share that, but I just did. So, <laughs> you uh, have the scoop. <laughs> you have home. the scoop. Okay, so why should people tune into Castle? Well, first of all, Castle is like, well, Crossroads has been making kids content for a long time, yeah. um, but there's never really been an easy way to get access to all of it at once. Mm. And our kids, I have three kids, they're constantly going through things over and over and over again. So we wanted to provide that solution to parents. Um, so that's what we've done. We've made it so that it's super easy for people to download it on their apps, their iPads, their iPhones, and their TVs as well. Um, to, to play that content whenever their kids want it. That's awesome. Thanks, Joel. Okay, go to intothecastle.com to get your subscription today. Well, up next, sometimes we go through difficult seasons in our lives. I have no idea what, you're, what we're talking about. I've never gone through a difficult season, never. have you? Ne never. Well, here's popular author and speaker John Bevere to set us straight and provide some insight. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to talk about my new book, God, Where Are You? Now, what I want to do is I want to focus in, why does God allow us to go into a wilderness? Why does he not only allow, but leads us? Well, one of the reasons is he wants to grow us up spiritually. Quick example, Addison, our firstborn, we used to dress him in like a minute. When he started dressing himself, it took five minutes and he was frustrated. But he was maturing because we didn't want to button his shirt when he was 18. You see, you have to understand, just as there is physical growth, there's intellectual growth, and there's spiritual growth. We are spirits. We have a soul, and we live in a body. Our spirit, Peter says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Peter, uh, Peter and Paul talk about being spiritually mature. That's an adult. So, this is one of the ways that God helps us to grow. If you look at physical growth, it's a function of and limited to time. You've never seen a two-year-old six feet tall. It takes 18 years. Intellectual growth is not a function of time. It's a function of learning. You've got to go first, second, third, fourth, but you know what? Some people have done it and they're called child prodigies in eight years where others it took 15 years. Some didn't even graduate. But if you look at spiritual growth, it's not a function of time. 
Okay, I have seen 20 people that have been saved 20 years that are not as mature as people that have been saved two years. It's not a function of learning. The Pharisees could quote the first five books of the Bible by memory, but they can't recognize the Son of God when He's delivering people right in front of their face. So how do we grow spiritually? Peter tells us, he says in 1 Peter 4, 1, he says, since Christ suffered, listen to the word suffered, for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That word cease from sin means you have reached complete spiritual maturity. So Peter says, arm yourself for it. Don't be caught off guard. Be armed like a pilot is armed for an emergency. The passengers are. Emergency hits a plane. The pilots are, are acting. The passengers are reacting. Peter is saying that a Christian is not, that is not armed to suffer is one who's going to react and not act. He's going to scream. He's going to go into bewilderment, amazement. He's going to be so frustrated because he doesn't understand what's going on. I'm in a season which I'm going to grow. Are you seeing this? Now, I know people that have suffered that are bitter. Oh, yeah, bitter, not better. So there's another element. So spiritual growth is not just a function of suffering. There's another element. The Bible says in Hebrews 5, 8, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. So true spiritual maturity comes when we are going through trials, through wilderness, and we obey God instead of disobey God. So it's not in the great times when we're obedient that we grow. It's in the hard times. We grow spiritually because we choose to obey, just like Joseph. Joseph obeyed God even when he had seen disappointment for 10 years and he fled sexual immorality. He was obedient. He became a very mature leader. This is what God wants for you. He wants maturity. He wants to see you grow up. Getting through challenging seasons isn't just a matter of waiting on God. In his powerful new book, God, Where Are You? Finding Strength and Purpose in Your Wilderness, Best-selling author John Bevere shows you how God is using your difficult season to prepare and equip you for your destiny. The wilderness is when God seems like he's a million miles away and his promises are even further. Now, this is not a time of rejection. This is not a time of God saying, I'm fed up with you. This is a time where God is saying, I'm preparing you to have the character to handle what I've called you to do. God, Where Are You? equips you with key biblical insights and profound stories that will help you discover the big role you play in life's most difficult seasons, handle your difficult seasons correctly, and stop wasting time wandering in circles. I want to encourage you. I wrote this book, God, Where Are You?, to strengthen you in this time so you'll navigate it successfully, so you'll receive the promises that He's made to you. This book is a must read and is our special thanks for your ministry support. For a suggested minimum gift of $25, you will receive this eye-opening resource that will help you navigate life's driest seasons. Quantities are limited. Act now. Call 1-800-265-3100 or visit crossroads.ca slash purpose and request your copy today. I'm really enjoying these segments with John Bevere. He has just been speaking truth and even challenging us, grow up. You know, if, if God could learn and, and grow obedient, Jesus in the flesh here on earth, grow obedient to Christ or to God, how much more can we actually be obedient to God? So we would love to get Amazing. this book into your hand. God, where are you? For a suggested gift of $25 or more, you can call 1-800-265-3100. And when you do so, you are supporting this ministry. Look how weathered this book Book is Joel. <laughs> you have read we, this book. We as a group have been reading this book as well. Cheryl Weber. Yeah, Amazing. it's been good. And you're going to TIFF. I am. We're heading out on the road. We're going to be at TIFF tomorrow. We're going to be bringing back a report. I, I'm going to see, I can't wait, the new Mr. Rogers film. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. That is actually not Mr. Rogers. That is Tom Hanks in this prolific role, this iconic role. So I'm so excited to see the movie. We'll be sitting down with actor Enrico Colatoni. If you see his face, you'll remember him from Flashpoint and all these great shows. He also plays a role 
role in this new film. I can't wait just to be down to I love just the I want to go being there. I yeah, go. it's gonna yeah. be super super fun. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you ever want to check out any of our content, go to our website 100huntley.com. Visit Castle as well with great family friendly content. We want to make sure that you are absorbing great positive content every single day. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Thank you for your ongoing support of Crossroads, a member of the Canadian Council of Christian Charities. You can write to Crossroads, P.O. Box 5100, Burlington, Ontario, L7R 4M2. Deeks Insurance is a proud sponsor of the 100 Huntley Street Studio. Wherever you are across our great nation, when you need prayer, give us a call anytime. We're here for you.